just coming through with a very impromptu and uh, quick unplanned coffee th thought because I wanted to check in with you guys and to see how y'all were doing. So I will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Coffee Rhetoric. I am your intrepid and tipsy host, Tiffany J, coming through with a very quick and impromptu coffee break thought and uh, with clashing animal ideations. Uh, I've got leopard in the background while trying to s literally serve foxy and brown. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't really have anything in particular to talk about. I just basically just wanted to come through and um, see how y'all were doing um, and to say hi and to give a couple of very, very quick coffee break thoughts on this fine Saturday evening. Um, first and foremost, um, I know um, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It is the holiday season. And I know it's a very festive and, and cheerful and uh, holly and jolly time for a lot of people. But I know for um, some others, this can be a very dark and just very unhappy and sad Um and maybe even depressing time for some people. And um, a lot of the times I know it's hard. You don't want to hear a lot of just very trite um, and empty uh, platitudes. Uh, you don't want to hear people gaslighting you into trying to be positive during this time of year. Because again, I know it's not a very cheerful year for some people um, for a myriad of reasons. And so, you know, I just want to say uh, during this time of year that um, I hope th those of you who um, are in a very sad and dark place, I, I, I wish you well. I hope you're doing good and I hope you're engaging in activities um, that makes you feel okay. You don't have to necessarily feel cheerful or happy, but I hope you're doing things, engaging with things that um, make you feel good. And um, yeah, and you're in my thoughts. Oh, and also, um, I also uh, going into the uh, new year, um, I've, if you haven't noticed, I have a little new intro. And so I'm trying some new things uh, to help usher me into the new year. So I figured I kick off with a new intro. Oh, and another thing I want to talk about um, going into the new year. Um, I have some, I have a New Year's Eve idea uh, kicking around in my head and up my sleeve, coming down the pike. And if all goes according to plan, um, yeah, I will be going live on New Year's Eve with a very <laughs> interesting and uh, I wouldn't call it fun, but a very interesting and juicy kind of uh, hot topic for the new year. I wanted to go live and um, I'm trying to secure a special guest. And if she's able to come through, we will be going live on New Year's Eve talking about a very interesting topic. So stay tuned. Yes, I'm not going to announce it just yet, but just know that on New Year's Eve, Eve if everything goes well, I'm going to be live streaming. Uh, with a special guest um, on a very particular to hot topic. So stay tuned for that. And what else? Um, yeah, so there's just a lot going on in the news. But the one thing I kind of wanted to talk about was, is the release of Brittany Griner, um, WNBA uh, basketball 
player, Brittany Griner, um, had been in jail, had been, uh, was in a Russian prison, basically. She was overseas in Russia uh, playing professional basketball, which is not unheard of for um professional athletes who don't make uh, millions and trillions of dollars, particularly uh, female uh, women uh, professional basketball players don't make um, multi-millions of dollars. So a lot of times during the off season to help supplement their incomes, some of them may go overseas. And that is what Brittany Griner had been doing. But unfortunately, she got caught up in what I'm assuming is uh, the political crossfire with everything that's been going on with Russia and the United States and the Ukraine and this current administration. Um, she had been uh, caught up uh, on a trumped up drug charge in Russia. Uh, and so she had been being held there and then um, she essentially was moved to some sort of uh, labor harsh labor camp over in Russia. But anyway, um, the Biden administration secured her release and traded her off for an arms dealer and her release was secured. Um, and uh, as far as I know, she finally uh, made it back to the U.S. after a long and arduous process. And um it just the whole situation is just kind of sad. And, um, you know, I know it was, it was probably just a very scary time um, and very uh, trepidatious and untrustworthy time for Brittany because, you know, um, you've been through a very uh, traumatic experience, a harrowing and traumatic experience in another country. Um, and then you're, you finally, uh, get to go ahead to come home. And I, you know, I would imagine that, you know, until she touched down on American soil, she was probably feeling a bit wary. You don't know what's going on. You're, you, you're very mistrustful. So I can imagine that, um, she was scared, but I also imagine that she's glad to be home. She's glad to be around her loved ones, but, um, yeah, it, it, just, you know, the footage that was released with her packing up her things and being on the airplane and everything, she looked very scared. Um, and I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions about the trade-off. Surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly enough, a lot of those opinions are very, have been very, uh, misogynoir and have been very misogynoiristic and um anti uh lgbtq because uh britney griner is an openly uh gay uh woman and um i don't know but a lot of the opinions have been very just kind of um very pointed and ugly. And you know, I've been seeing a lot of just kind of very uh, right wing extreme uh, extremist comments, uh, partisan comments like calling Brittany Griner a thug, lying, uh, lying in the spread of misinformation about why she was being held in Russia. Just, just a very, a, a lot of very ugly comments, even from within our own community. Uh, but then you had people commenting on her appearance. Oh, look at her hair. And, uh, she looks like Pete Davidson. Oh, she doesn't have her dreadlocks. So ha 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 ha. Ki, 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 ki. Just a lot of just very, um, ugly comments. And like I said, um, surprising to some, but for those of us, um, with lived experiences as black women, whether you're gay, heterosexual, cis, or trans, um, none of this is new to us because misogynoir, unfortunately, always endures. And people um, seem to always like to uh, relish in the 
um, in Black women's uh, distress. So in any event, um, yes, I've just been seeing just a very, a lot of just very ugly comments uh, hurled towards Brittany Griner um, in her release. And uh, a lot of it has been uh, about, oh, well, why didn't you release Paul Whelan, uh, another American citizen uh, who's been uh, being held in Russia for years um, for um, uh, United States Marines veteran um, who's been being held in Russia for years um, and, and being accused, who was accused of being a spy. Now, mind you, in the midst of um, all that's been going on with Brittany Griner, um, Paul Whelan's name uh, hadn't been mentioned uh, at all um, until uh, Brittany Griner's release was secured. And a lot of the animus is coming from, of course, um, a lot of right-wing conservatives who have chosen to make Brittany Griner's release a partisan uh, issue and have chose to uh, weaponize the issue to smear her, just make a lot of just very inflammatory comments. Now, mind you, the thieving, the thieving, uh, treasonous, uh, or orange uh, dark overlord uh, that resides in Mar-a-Lago um, had what two or some odd years to work on the release of Paul Whelan. Okay, um, and since he's buddy buddy with Vladimir Putin, um, he had at least two years to secure the release of Paul Whelan. Up until now, conservatives have, haven't have uttered a word about Paul Whelan's um, imprisonment over in Russia. Um, because let's keep it real. They don't give a shit. Um, a lot of conservatives, especially the uh, MAGA leg of the Republican Party, they don't give a shit about military veterans. They don't give a shit about um, law enforcement. They don't give a shit about patriotism. But ever since uh, the release, uh, Brittany Griner's release, you have some right-wing conservatives making uh snide remarks like, oh, well, then maybe now that she's been released from Russia, she'll start... Um, she'll stop kneeling during the national anthem. It's like a lot of you assholes are, are just performative patriots. You're miming patriotism. You don't give a shit about this country. And your agenda is very unpatriotic. So I find it rich that uh, you want to gaslight and uh, condescend to this woman who's just been through a very uh, harrowing orde ordeal. Um, you want to try to condescend to her and you want to try to gaslight her and make her feel even worse. Um, and then you have some right-wing conservatives who want to start invoking the name of Paul Whelan and they're trying to all of a sudden uh, use him as a martyr to further their nefarious ne agenda when you haven't heard them utter a word about Paul Whelan's imprisonment in Russia at all. Um, because again, let's be fair, let's be real, they don't care about Paul Whelan's Republicans particularly a lot of like just kind of right-wing extremists. They don't care about anything or anyone except the elites in that particular cult of personality and their agenda. So all of a sudden they want to paint um, Paul, Whelan, Paul Whelan as a very upstanding um, military veteran when um, let's, let's keep it real. Um, he has a court-martialed bad conduct discharge on his military record for attempted larceny, for writing bad checks, for making false statements, and for dereliction 
of duty. Okay. Um, and he's also, he's been being held in Russia, um, because he was suspected of being a spy. Now, you know, uh, the reasonings why he was in prison in Russia, let's, let's be real. It's probably bullshit. Um, I guess they were saying that, uh, According to news reports, um, he was he went to Russia for um, a wedding, and he had some kind of files on a hard drive or something, and uh, he got pulled aside, and then uh, I guess uh, they accused him of having some sort of classified secret um, documents, and they basically. Um, accused him of being a spy. And again, that's probably bullshit, but um, more or less um, the fact that you haven't heard right-wing conservatives utter the name Paul Whelan until now because um, they wanted Brittany Griner to be languishing in a Russian labor camp and they don't think she's worthy enough to have been released and to be back home. Um, needless to say, I just think it's, it's just very cruel. I think a lot of the commentary surrounding her release has just been very ugly. It's just been very cruel. It's been intellectually dishonest. It's, it's bullshit, basically. None of them have given a shit about Paul Whelan up until now. Trump has had two years to uh, work on negotiating the release of Paul Whelan um, and didn't because he didn't care. And they genuinely don't care. But as per usual, a lot of them just like to talk a lot of shit um, to suit their nefarious nefarious partisan agendas. Um, so that's that on that. I don't want to go on too much of a rant because I just wanted this to be a very quick um, coffee break thought because I had some very disorganized thoughts about this. Um, and I, um, I don't want to ramble on too much, but, um, I will say while everybody's making these very ugly and pointed, uh, comments about Brittany Griner's, uh, release, um, Paul Whelan's family are in full support of her being traded off and released and returned back to the United States. They, the charges, uh, they have them on. I just think it's a little more complex and weightier. But in any event, um, uh, Paul Whelan's uh, brother made this comment on Twitter about a lot of the right-wing conservatives using his brother to... Uh, propagate and perpetuate their uh, disingenuous and um, nefarious agendas. And they said, um, former President Trump appears to have mentioned my brother Paul Whelan's wrongful uh, detention more in the last 24 hours than he did in the two years of his presidency in which Paul was held hostage by Russia I don't suggest he cares now any more than he did then. Zero. Whelan's family is not here for the uh, right wing fuck shit. Any of them invoking his brother's name um, to further their agenda. Um, so yeah, on that note, you know, there's just a lot of breaking news and hot topics going on. Clayton Bigsby West, aka Kanye West, fuck shit. Um, uh, Derek, as Tasha K refers to him as Derek Action Jackson, uh, fake play play relationship guru, uh, Derek Jackson, and his wife had just announced his divorce from his wife. There's just so much going on in the news. But again, um, this is a very impromptu coffee break thoughts. I just mostly just wanted to check in with you all. And I wanted to say a few very tipsy uh, thoughts about uh, Brittany Griner and all the BS surrounding her release from a uh, Russian uh, labor camp. Um, on that note, um, yes, 
I will come back. I will be a little less tipsy and um, I'll be back to talk about some other things. Bye. Mm -hmm.